back to my channel. My name is Holly. This is She Reads. Today we are going to be doing part two of my biggest book haul ever. I decided to split these videos into two parts because I had over 60 books to haul. So that was a lot. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to make like one gigantic hour long video. So I just split them up into two. If you have not seen part one, I highly recommend you check that one out. Definitely go and check it out after this one or before it. I will have the link in the description box below. But without further ado, let's just get right on into this video. So I'm going to finish up with my library haul. If you have not seen my first episode of this little series, um, basically my library was having a huge clearance sale where I got to pick out a crap ton of books for $10. So they had like either the books were 25 cents each or you could fill up a bag, a shopping bag for $5. So I got 35 bucks at the sale and it only cost me $10. So I went through the most of those in the first half of this video, but I'm going to finish up with the second half and here are the books that I got from the library. So the first book we're going to talk about is Room um, by Emma Donahue. And this one follows a mother and son who have been captured. And I believe that she has had her son like from her captors. So it says to five-year-old Jack, the room is, is the world. It's where he was born. It's where he and Ma eat and sleep and play and learn. But to Ma, room is the prison where she's been kept since she was 19 for seven long years. Through her fierce love for her son, she has created a life for him. She's created a life for him in this 11 by 11 foot space, but these walls can't hold them forever. This one sounds super good. I'm super into um, like true crime and stuff like that. Like I watch on YouTube all like missing persons cases and stuff like that. So I'm super interested in stuff like this. And this one sounds super good. I hope they get, I'm sure they do get out of it by the end of the book, but I hope it does. The next book that I picked up is a Ted Decker book, and I have read a few Ted Decker books, and I have a few of them on my shelf. Um, this one is called The Sanctuary, and he is a really, really, really good writer. Um, I really enjoy his stuff, and I've never read this one. Um, drawn into a terrifying game of life and death, the lives of Renee Gilmore and Danny Hansen are in each other's hands, and the body count will not stop at two. The Sanctuary is the gripping story of a vigilante priest, Danny Hansen, who is now serving a 50-year prison term in California for the murder of two abusive men. Filled with remorse, Danny is determined to live out his days by a code of nonviolence and maneuvers deftly within a deadly prison system. But when Renee Gilmore, the woman he loves, receives a box containing a bloody finger and draconian demands from a mysterious enemy on the outside, Danny must find a way to protect Renee while at the same time Renee enacts a plan to free Danny from incarceration. They are both drawn into a terrifying game of life and death. If Renee fails, the priest will die. If Danny fails, Renee will die. And the body count will not stop at two. The next book is Greg Hurwitz's Your Next. And this one also is a thriller. Mike Wingate had a rough childhood. He was abandoned at a playground at four years old and raised in foster care. No one ever came to claim him and he only has a few fragmented memories of his parents. Now, as an adult, Mike is finally living the life he had always wanted. He's happily married to Annabelle, the woman of his dreams. They have a wonderful young daughter and his successful construction company guarantees a solid future for them all. Until Mike's past comes back to haunt him. Menacing characters are starting to surface in Mike's life, and when he reports them, the police seem more interested in Mike's murky origins than in protecting the family he has now. With no one left to turn to, Mike calls on Shep, a truly dangerous man, and Mike's only true friend from their childhood days together in foster care. Together, the two of them will do whatever it takes to protect Mike and his loved ones against a hidden enemy who comes with a deadly warning. You're next. Next we have a series or part of a series because I do own the first one already and this is book two and three of the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. So we've got Fifty Shades Freed and Fifty Shades Darker. I have never, this is going to be a video coming out as well fairly soon about um, popular series that I have not read but want to. Um, I started Fifty Shades of Grey when it very first came out and I got like a quarter of the way into it and lost interest so but I mean it's done like so well it has to be somewhat good right I don't know like they're 25 cents each so I thought I'd pick them up since I already have the first one why not we'll see next is a book called luckiest girl alive by Jessica Knoll as a teenager at the prestigious Bradley school Anna Annie Finelli that's a moniker 
endured a shocking public humiliation that left her desperate to reinvent herself. Now, with a glamorous job, expensive wardrobe, and handsome blue blood fiance, she's this close to living the perfect life she's worked so hard to achieve. But Annie has a secret. There's something else buried in her past that still haunts her, something private and painful that threatens to bubble in the surface and destroy everything. The question remains, will breaking her silence destroy all that she has worked for, or will it, and long last, set Annie free? The next to last book that I picked up from the library is The Witch of Babylon by DJ McIntosh. John Madison is a Turkish American art dealer raised by his much older brother Samuel, a respected Mesopotamian scholar. Caught between Samuel's obsession with saving a priceless relic looted from Iraq's National Museum and a deadly game of revenge staged by his childhood friend, John must solve a puzzle to find the link between a modern day witch and an ancient one. Aided by an archaeologist and an Iraqi photojournalist, he race, races against time to decipher a biblical prophecy that leads to the dark history behind the science of alchemy. John's quest unearths a fabulous treasure of tro treasure trove and the truth behind a famous long story believed to be a myth. This kind of reminds me of a Down Brown book. So yeah, I'm not sure. It seems a little, I don't know about this one, but I do like Down Brown, but this kind of like, I don't know. We'll see. And the last book that I picked up in my library book sale is The the Alienist by Caleb Carr. Um, step into another time, an unforgettable terror. The year is 1896. The city is New York. The hunt is on for a baffling new kind of criminal, a serial killer. All that. So that wraps up the library version of my haul. Now we're gonna get into the books that I got for free from my mom. She had a whole bunch of books in the garage that she didn't even know she had, that somebody had given to her like years ago. Um, and they're all like thriller type books, so they're right at my alley. So I took them off her hands. So first we're gonna talk about a series and this is the Vampire Kisses series. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Vampire Kisses. I'm assuming that these were released on the heels of the Twilight trilogy because as soon as Twilight did so well, all of a sudden there was a million vampire novels out. Um, and this just kind of almost looks like a copycat of that. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be interested in these ones. Um, this one, this first book, has I think the first two books or the first three books. The first three books in the series is in this first one. And then there's two other ones. Like, so they're actually quite small. Um, so yeah, they'll definitely be probably easy to get through. Um, but let's just read the synopsis for this first book. So it says, a new guy in town, rumors of vampires, dangerous first love. The mansion on top of Benson Hill has stood empty for years, but one day it seems to be occupied and its mysterious handsome inhabitant, Alexander Sterling, becomes the source of much talk around town. Raven, a vampire obsessed goth girl who has always considered herself an outsider in Dullsville, is determined to uncover the truth surrounding the secret of Alexander. As she gets to know him and their spark intensifies, Raven finds herself in some unanticipated situations. Can Alexander make her lifelong dream come true? But love always has its complications, especially when it can only be awakened at nightfall. So this is the first three books in the series. This definitely sounds like a Twilight knockoff, but we'll see. So next is a James Patterson book called Mary Mary. I mean, James Patterson, he's kind of hit or miss for me. Um, and this is like a cop book. It's about an FBI agent um, on vacation with his family in Disneyland when he gets a call from the director. A top actress has been shot outside her home in Beverly Hills. Shortly afterward, an editor in the Los Angeles Times reveals an email recounting the murder in shocking detail. Signed, Mary Smith. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, they're kind of, they kind of are on like the same formula. Like James Patterson writes from a formula his books are kind of all very similar. So we'll see about this one. This one might be a hit or miss for me. Next we have Rage by Jonathan Kellerman. And uh, this one I think is a thriller. Troy Turner and Rand Duche were barely teenagers when they kidnapped and murdered a younger child. Troy, a remorseless sociopath, died violently behind bars, but the hulking slow-witted Rand manages to survive his stretch. Now, at age 21, he's emerged to a haunted, rootless young man with a pressing need to talk once again with psychologist Alex Delaware. But when the young killer comes to a brutal end, that conversation is silenced forever. Did karma catch up with Rand, or did someone wait eight long years to dine on ice-cold revenge? 
Both seem strong possibilities to Sturgis, but Delaware's suspicions run deeper and darker because fear in the voice of the grown-up Rand Duche and his eerie final words to Delaware, I'm not a bad person, betray untold secrets, buried revelations so horrendous and so damning they're worth killing for. That one actually sounds really good. Next, we have another James Patterson book called The Fifth Horseman. Um, a young mother is recuperating in San Francisco hospital when she is suddenly gasping for breath. The call button fails to bring help in time. The, the hospital's doctors, some of the best in the nation, are completely mystified by her death. How did this happen? This is not the first such case at the hospital. Just as patients are about to be released with a clean bill of health, their conditions take a devastating turn for the worse. Accompanied by the newest member of the Women's Murder Club, Yuki Castanello, Lieutenant Lindsay Boxer probes deeper into the incidents. Could these cases be appalling coincidences or is a maniac playing God with people's lives? When someone close to the Women's Murder Club begins to exhibit the same frightening symptoms, Lemon Lindsay fears no one is safe. So I've never read any of his um, Murder Club books, so I'm not sure if I have to read them in succession or if they're all like standalones. Can somebody let me know in the comments down below if like what is the case with that? The next book is by Sue Grafton called S is for Silence. 34 years ago, Violet Sullivan put on her party finery and left for the annual 4th of July fireworks display. She was never seen again. In the small California town of Serena Station, tongues wagged. Some said she'd run off with a lover. Some said she was murdered by her husband. But for the not quite seven-year-old daughter Daisy she left behind, her absence has never been explained or forgotten. Now, 34 years later, she wants the solace of closure. Next, we have a Mary Higgins Clark book called Two Little Girls in Blue. In a riveting new thriller, worldwide best-selling suspense writer Mary Higgins Clark weaves the mystery of twin telepathy, telepathy into a mother's search for a kidnapped child presumed dead. Margaret and Steve Frawley celebrate the third birthday of their twin girls, Kelly and Kathy, with an afternoon party in their new home, a modest fixer upper in Bridgefield, Connecticut. The evening of the twins' birthday party, Steve and Margaret attend a black tie dinner in New York. When they return home, the police are in the house and they are told that the babysitter had been found unconscious, the children are gone, and a note demanding an $8 million ransom had been left in their room. Steve Frawley's firm, a global investment company, agrees to pay the ransom. The kidnapper, who identifies himself as the Pied Piper, makes his terms known. On delivery of the ransom, a call will come, revealing the girl's whereabouts. The call comes, but only Kelly is in the car parked behind the deserted restaurant. The driver is found dead from a gunshot wound and has left a suicide note saying he had inadvertently killed Kathy and had dumped her body in the ocean. At the private memorial mass for, Kelly, for Kathy, Kelly tugs Margaret's arm and says, Mommy, Kathy is very scared of that lady. She wants to come home right now. More unexplainable occurrences follow, indicating that Kelly is in touch with Kathy. At first, no one except the mother believes that the twins are communicating and that Kathy is still alive. As Kelly's warnings become increasingly specific and alarming, however, FBI agents set out a search for Kathy. The novel reaches a breathtaking climax as they close in on the Pied Piper and his accomplices while Kathy's life hangs by a thread. I've got chills from reading that. It sounds so good. The next to last book that I got from my mother for free is Dean Koontz's Forever Odd. We're all a little odd beneath the surface. He's the most unlikely hero you'll ever meet, an ordinary guy with a modest job you might never look at twice. But there's so much more to any of us than what meets the eye, and that goes triple for Odd Thomas. For Odd, for Odd lives always between two worlds in the small desert town of Pico Mundo, where the heroic and harrowing are everyday events. Odd never asks to communicate with the dead. It's something that just happened. But as the unofficial goodwill ambassador between our world and theirs, he's got a duty to do the right thing. That's the way Odd sees it, and that's why he's won hearts on both sides of the divide between life and death. A childhood friend of Odd's has disappeared. The worst is feared, but as Odd applies his unique talents to the task of finding the missing person, he discovers something worse than a dead body, encounters an enemy of exceptional cunning, and spirals into a vortex of terror. Once again, Odd will stand against our worst fears. Around him will gather new allies and old, some living and some not, for in the battle to come, there can be no innocent bystanders, and every sacrifice can tip the balance between despair and hope. So this sounds to me like this is a 
series, like part of a series. I'm going to have to look into this. Like, it just sounds like we've met this character before, but I haven't, so... I'm gonna need to look into that. And the last book that I got from my mom is actually a Danielle Steele novel called The House. And I had no idea that she wrote any horror novels. I thought for some reason that she was like a romance writer. Maybe she is and she just also does this. I thought she was only a romance novel. I have never read anything by her. Um, but I mean, she's extremely famous. So her writing is probably good. Um, Perched on a hill overlooking San Francisco, the house was magnificent, built in 1923 by a wealthy, wealthy man for the woman he adored. For her and for this house, he would spare no expense and overlook no detail, from the endless marble floors to the glittering chandeliers. Almost a century later, with the once grand house now in disrepair, a young woman walks through its empty rooms. Sarah Anderson, a perfectly sensible estate lawyer, is about to do something utterly out of character. An elderly client has died and left her two gifts. One is a generous inheritance, the other a priceless message. To use his money for something wonderful, something daring, and in this old house surrounded by crumbling grandeur, Sarah knows just what it is. A respected attorney and self-described workaholic, Sarah has always lived life by the book. With a steady, if sputtering, relationship and a tiny apartment that has suited her just fine, Sarah cannot explain the force that draws her to the mansion and its history, to the story of a woman who once lived in the house then mysteriously left it to a child who grew up there, and a drama that unfolded in war-torn France and to a history she never knew she had. Taking the biggest risk of her life, Sarah enlists the help of architect Jeff, architect Jeff Parker, who shares Sarah's passion for bringing the exquisite old house back to life. As she and Jeff work to restore the home's every detail, as one relationship shatters and another begins, Sarah makes a series of powerful discoveries about the true meaning of a dying man's last gift, about the extraordinary legacies that are passed from generation to generation, and about a future she's only just beginning to imagine. So maybe this isn't actually a horror novel. I mean, I guess it could be, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what genre this actually is. Like when I first read it, it like kind of, it kind of reminded me of my work in progress, which is a horror novel. Um, so that's kind of why I thought it was horror, but maybe it's not. Like maybe it's more about the relationship that between this woman and the architect that she hires. I'm not sure. But those were the books that I got for free from my mom. And then now we're going to head into the last few books. And those are the ones that I picked up from my local thrift store. And they always have a sale on where if you buy four books, you get the fifth one free. So I picked up quite a few from there as well. The first book is called The Unwelcome Child by Therese Pampalone. And this one is a horror novel. It says the old Victorian home stands at the top of a hill overlooking Martha's Vineyard, nestled in a forest of green pines and a rainbow of wild flowers, just a stone's throw away from the beach. It was Jan Hosetter's dream to convert the three-story house into a bed and breakfast, but she gladly surrenders that dream when a miracle occurs. She becomes pregnant. For years, doctors told Jan she was incapable of conceiving, but now she and her husband have been doubly blessed with a child on the way and the perfect place to raise a family. Annie Wojoko is in Martha's Vineyard to help out and share in Jan's happiness, but as the due date draws nearer, Annie's concern for her best friend grows. The pregnancy has left Jan frail and without an appetite. She's become superstitious, covering every mirror in her home and refusing to leave under any circumstances, fearing her baby will die if she does. And as Annie learns about the violent history of the house, she comes to realize that what's growing in Jan's body isn't a miracle at all, but a mother's most terrifying nightmare. Ooh, that sounds creepy. And this actually looks like a really, really pretty cover. Well, like also creepy cover. <laughs> book actually was given to me by my boyfriend and he had received it like years ago because he loves the show Dexter. Um, he received it for Christmas years ago and my boyfriend's not a reader, so. He never even read it, but he loves the show Dexter and I've never seen the show. Um, but so he just found this and he said, well, I'm pretty sure that you'll like it. And if you like the book, then maybe we can rewatch the series together. So it's Dexter, it's the book, and it is what the series was based on. The next book is called This Is Not A Werewolf Story by Sandra Evans. And this one sounds really, really cute. And it's also got a really pretty cover. I guess you could say that I'm not a big talker. The things that matter most don't need words, but I remember how alone I felt when I first came to one of our kind boarding school. That's why I speak up for the new kid, even though it shocks everyone. Dean says the new kid has secrets. They can't be anything like mine, can they? I've seen some things in the woods here nobody would have believed. 
In fact, I am something that nobody would believe. But I like you, so I'll tell you. Hidden deep among the trees, there's a lighthouse. As soon as the other kids go home for the weekend, I rush there and wait for sunset. And the amazing thing that happens then. Because when the sun goes down, I'm no longer the only one of my kind. So this is about a werewolf and I've never read a book about a werewolf before but I think this sounds really cute and I think I'll really enjoy it. The next book that I got is book one in the Mortal Instruments series. This is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare and I have just like slowly been picking up books out of her series whenever I see them like on sale like this. The next book that I found is Jay Asher's 13 Reasons Why and if you, I mean most people have watched the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why. I actually haven't watched the second season yet. Um, but I do plan on doing it. So this is about a teenage girl named Hannah who commits suicide and leaves notes for everyone who was involved or who led to, um, who contributed to her death. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed the series, the TV series. I know that it's like quite a controversy, um, but I wanted to read the novel so that I could kind of compare and contrast the two. The next book that I picked up is Night Visitor by Gillian White and this one says Rose's early life was full of tragedy. Her father disappeared one night, presumed drowned, and her twin brother died when he was only 10 on a bike that had been his cherished birthday present. No wonder that she depends on her husband Michael. He is the only certainty in her life and provides the love and stability that her own family background lacked. All Rose asks of Michael is complete fidelity and when she has cause to doubt him she devises a terrible revenge. Michael has planned an anniversary trip to Venice for the two of them, but as they ride in gondolas, dine on delicious seafood, and wander the sights of the most romantic cities, Rose, wracked with secret jealousy, is making plans. By the time they return, Michael will have become seriously ill, although not so ill that he cannot recognize the fact that something truly dreadful has happened to him. In this chilling novel, Gillian Wright explores the most destructive of human weaknesses, jealousy. That one sounds creepy and sounds like a crazy bitch. The last three books that we're going to talk about today is Suzanne Collins' trilogy, The Hunger Games. So I have never read these. I've never seen the movies either. When they first came out, I kind of thought like that it sounded like a stupid, <laughs> like a stupid premise for a book. A lot of you might get mad at me for saying that. Um, but I just, it didn't sound like anything I'd be interested in. But once again, I saw these there and I thought like, I mean, they've done so well. They've got to be good, right? Like, I've heard nothing but good things about these novels. And they were, like, so cheap. And they're, like, brand new hardcovers. So, I mean, I got them for, like, basically five bucks. Um, yeah, so I figured why not pick them up. Well, you guys, that is it for my haul. So that was part two of my biggest haul ever. There was over 60 books that I discussed in these two videos. I split them in two halves. Um, like I said before, if you have not watched the first half, I will link it in the description box below. Let me know in the comments which books of these you have read and let me know what books you've picked up recently. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I will see you in my next video. Bye!